Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord Bible study video. We can go ahead and pray and get started. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for another day. Thank you for glorifying in your presence and just spending time in your presence and service today, God. Thank you for being sharpened with other believers. Lord God, thank you for everything, Jesus. Thank you for authority. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise that is due your name, Jesus. Forgive us of our sins. Help us walk in righteousness. Help us to exude the fruit of the spirit in our lives. Plant this seed deep in our hearts that we might not sin against you, Lord God, your word, God. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. You are precious, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your word. It is you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and get started. My pastor is teaching on authority. I think this was the last sermon today. But I think I'll link the sermon series or at least link the last sermon um, to the end. It was just so good, so powerful. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and get started. Let me go back one. So we were in verse eight was the last one we went over last time. Um, Psalms 89. So verse eight, O Lord of hosts, who is mighty as you are, O Lord with your faithfulness all around you. All right. And we talked about that faithfulness around you, meaning your faithfulness surrounds you in some translations. So we are in Psalms 89 still, and we're in verse nine right now. All right. So it says, you rule the raging of the sea. When its waves rise, you still them. So in other words, he calms the sea. He is the one who controls every wave. Just think, when you look out over water, you don't see a couple of waves, right? You see almost like an infinite amount of waves. They're just all over the place, right? And in between the visible waves, you see lots of kind of smaller invisible waves or like smaller than than the normal wave. And it just kind of keeps going on and on. Every ripple of the water He's ruler over it. He controls it. So if he controls every single wave of the sea, he rules the raging of the sea, then how much more so can he lead you beside still waters? How much more so can he provide for you as a fountain, as a wellspring of life? He is your God. He is God over everything. Not just your God. He is God over the entire world so when you think about your circumstances it just makes your circumstances look so much smaller you rule the raging of the sea it didn't say that the sea would not rage in your life it did not say that that you would always have still waters right but sometimes he's just going to lead you to that peaceful place that's regardless of the raging of the sea why because he's the ruler over it right? Just like when it said the Lord of the Sabbath, right? He can heal on the Sabbath because he's the Lord of the Sabbath. He's the one who controls and dictates the rules and the regulations. He fulfilled all of the law, right? So it says you rule the raging of the sea. When its waves rise, you still them. Thank you, Lord, for stealing waves in my life were calming down situations that could have gotten way out of control if I didn't have you or if I didn't have your name to call on what would I do who who else do I have in heaven besides you right that's what the word says whom have I in heaven but you who else could I call on what else could I use to dictate to this situation Lord you only are the one and you happen to also be my God Glory to your name. You rule the raging of the sea. When the waves rise, you still them. It says, verse 10, you crushed Rahab like a carcass. You scattered your enemies with your mighty 
arm. So I was like, why does it say Rahab? Because Rahab, remember Rahab was one who helped the spies. So I had to look this one up, but they, they're they saying that it refers to Egypt. So that's just another name that, um just like we were talking about the field of Zohan, that's Egypt. So Rahab represents Egypt as well. So it says you crushed Rahab like a carcass. Wow. So like when you think of like dry bones, right? Like it was nothing. It was just trampled upon. You crushed Rahab like a carcass. You scattered your enemies with your mighty arm. Wow. You scattered your enemies. It says that when your enemies come against you, they're going to come in one direction. Like they're going to come at you, right? But God is going to scatter them in seven directions. He's going to cause your enemy to flee from you in seven different directions remember seven is the number of completion so he's going to completely scatter your enemies right and and to the point of of no return so he's going to crush them it says you crushed Rahab like a carcass you scattered your enemies with your mighty arm God's arm is mighty it is mighty to save it is mighty to heal it is mighty to defend his people right? He is, he is a winner. He is going to win. He, he makes sure the battle is already won so that when you come out fighting, it, it's already determined, right? It's all, the battle has already been won. You don't even have to, to have to doubt it. All you have to do is have faith and believe in your God. You cannot fail with Christ in you. You cannot fail. It says you crushed Rahab like a carcass. You scattered your enemies with your mighty arm. Verse 11, the heavens are yours. The earth also is yours. The world and all that is in it. You founded them. You founded them. The heavens are yours. The earth is also yours. The world and all that is in it you have found in them. I just think about this scripture because like the first time I really can remember encountering God as a child, I was actually in a closet and I was like really young and I felt like something was there with me and it wasn't bad. It was like something good. It was either my angel, you know, maybe my guardian angel or, um, God, I knew God was real in that moment. Like, because as alone as I felt sitting in that closet, I I realized like, hmm, something is in here with me. And as a child, I just knew it. And I could still think back on that time and know that like, wow, God was real. Even when I had no concept of him, I knew that he was real. Right. So, and, and sometimes, you know, growing up, I, I would always reflect, what about the people who've never heard anything or never seen anything or heard, had anybody tell them about God. They know God is real. God has revealed himself in one way or another to people to let them know that he is real. And they say even Native Americans have a God um, that, that when they refer to God, like our God, Elohim of Elohim, our God, the most high God, um, they refer to God before they even knew anything about Christ as the one who was not created. Wow. Just think that is a tr- people group that did not have any knowledge of God of Christ, right? There are some um, native, uh, there are some tribes on islands that had never heard the gospel before. And, um, Jesus had manifested himself to someone there and he was able to tell them about Jesus. Um, I have heard about this testimony. I can't remember. I can't place it exactly, but I remember hearing about this, that he had had a dream of someone named Jesus and that he told the people about him. And I'm just thinking to myself, God has a way. He makes a way, right, to get his word out to the people, to get his word out even to the Gentiles of the world, right? It says, the heavens are yours. The earth also is yours. The world and all that is in it, you have founded them. Meaning like you created them, you established them, you started them right? Inside a seed is many more trees or plants, right? So, but how did they get their start? It had to be from something that was not created, 
Why? Because there, there has to be an origination point. There has to be a start. Christ alone is the start. The worlds were created through him. It says the heavens are yours. The earth also is yours. The world and all that is in it. You have founded them. Just think the world and also all that was in it. When I was in that small apartment in California as a child, inside that closet, the whole world belonged to the Lord. The sky, the earth, and all the whole world. And all that is in it, even that little closet, it belonged to the Lord, right? Every little child, every neglected one, every person, every soul, every leaf on a tree, every wave in the sea, it all belongs to him. The heaven are yours. The heavens are yours. The earth also is yours, the world and all that is in it, you have founded them. He is the beginning and he is the end. No one else could do it. It was not by um, happenstance. It was not a random occurrence that we have all this beauty that surrounds us. It is by his hand. Hallelujah. Verse 12, the North and South, you have created them. Tabor and Herman joyously praise your name. So when you say the North and the South, you're basically saying North, South, East, and West. Everything that surrounds us, the corners of the earth, everything is yours. You created it, right? The North and the South, meaning in their mind, they're probably thinking the, the northernmost region and the southernmost region. And then Tabor and Her Herman are um, large mountains in the east and the west. So the, he's saying that the reaches of the heavens to the east and the west, it's all joyously praising your name, the north and the south, you created them. So everything around, there is nothing around Ethan that he is not acknowledging that God created. God did it all north south east west Tabor Herman all of it is rejoicing joyously praising the name of the Lord it is saying hey I was created these beautiful little animals and you know you see these little animals with their cute little eyes and fur and, and their little bodies and you're like God created this little, this little panda bear, this little monkey. Look at the eyes. Look at the, the body. Look at the little fingers. This stuff was created by God. He founded them. This is not random. Look at babies when they're born. Their tiny little fingernails and their, their little hairs on their body. North, south, east, and west, you created them. Tabor and Herman, joyously praise your name. These are parts of nature. And if nature praises his name, how much more so a crying child or a baby or, or a, a person holding someone else's hand? These are all things that joyously praise his name in their existence, in their being. He was the start. He founded them. All right, let's keep moving. Verse 13, you have a mighty arm. Strong is your hand. High is your right hand. Wow. So it says you have a mighty arm, meaning like great is your arm. There is, there is extended reach in the arm of the Lord, right? It says you have a mighty arm. Strong is your hand. High your right hand. So the right hand, remember, represents um, physical blessings, a physical nature, physical strength, right? So, and, and it says you have a, a high right hand, meaning you have many blessings, much physical strength, much, much ability, right? God's hand is not short as it relates to shortness that men would think of, right? If he created the entire universe, all the planets, all the galaxies that are in high is his right hand. He is great in strength. He is strong. You have a mighty arm. Strong is your hand. High is your right hand. 
All right. And so, um, and, and when you think of just a hand and it being a strong hand, just think of like the carpenter, right? The ability to create carpenters have strong hands. They have to pry things and move things and hammer things and mold things, right? The potter and his wheel, you have to have strength in your hands to be a creator. He says here, high is your right hand, meaning it, 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 it is infinitely strong, right? It is lifted up. You have a mighty arm, strong is your hand, high is your right hand. Verse 14, righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. So just think, okay, so we have righteousness. So the right thing, uh, it, it being established in what is right and what is just, right? Meaning truth and, and, and the right thing, basically they kind of reinforce each other. So righteousness and justice um, are the foundation of your throne, where you sit, where you are established, where you rule from. He rules from righteousness. He rules from justice. They are at the foundation of his throne. That means he is established in them, right? God is a righteous and right God. He is a faithful and just God. He, there's no evil. There's no wickedness. There's no, no shadow of turning in him, right? We talked about that. And, and it says that steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. So not only is he rooted in, and founded in righteousness and justice, but a steadfast love and the faithfulness go before him. So he's not a God that comes out just striking automatically, right? He, that there's a very short time for that, a season for that in his, in his realm, but in a normal setting, steadfast love and righteousness go before him. That's his natural state of being is steadfast love, right? That, that consistent ongoing, always there for you, no matter whether you're high or low, whether you're, you're slacking and trusting in him, whether you're, you're, you're falling short of the mark right? It says it does, it's, it's God that we're talking about. He has steadfast, ongoing, unmovable, right? That's what we think of when we think of steadfast love that goes before him. Steadfast love, faithfulness, meaning he's not going to leave you. He is a faithful God. He is choosing you, right? It's a choice. It's not because of anything that you've done. It's because he's faithful. He is steadfast in his love towards you. And it comes out before him, right? He, he shows it in his demeanor towards us. Before he even gets to us, his steadfast love and faithfulness meet us, right? So it says steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. Verse 15, blessed are the people who know the festival, festal shout, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your face. Blessed are the people who know the festal, I don't know if I'm saying that right, festival, festal shout. So that was when I looked it up in the commentary, it was talking about like the, the festivals, like they had these different dances and shouts and things that the people would do. And you had to kind of know them. Um, it would also usher in the King. It would greet the King and, and put, put a, a, a beautiful kind of song before him. And it says, blessed are the people who know the festal shout. So do you know how to greet your king? How to, how to praise him and make him feel welcome in a place? Who or, or to roll out the red carpet for your king and say, hey, you are welcome here. Do you say that when you come into the sanctuary before the Lord? Do you say, hey, God, I don't know if anybody said it, but I just want to let you know you are welcome here in this place. Come, Lord Jesus. You are welcome. Your Holy Spirit is welcome here. If no one else is welcome, you are welcome here, 
right? You want to let the king know before he gets there that he is welcome here. This is a place where he can dwell. This is a place where he is welcome. This is a place where the carpet is rolled out for him, that he is a mighty God and he is worthy to be praised. And it is okay if you come down here, visit us, Lord God, grace us with your presence. That's how you you know the festal shout. Blessed are the people who know the festal shout, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your face. That means you're walking in the glory of the Lord, right? Because if he's coming towards you as you're welcoming him, he's shining his radiance towards you, right? So just think as he comes before you, we we know that this light contains steadfast love and faithfulness, just as the previous verse has said, but just think of his radiance and his glory, this beautiful love, this beautiful faithfulness that's coming towards you. And you're singing of this festival shout, you're saying you're welcome, oh Lord, and, and, we're, we're walking in his light and we have the light of his face shining upon us. Wow, how beautiful is our king? How mighty and strong is our God? It's a wonderful thing to welcome him in. It's a wonderful thing to create an atmosphere that is conducive to worship, an atmosphere that is conducive to the spirit being released. Don't hold back. Don't hold back. At times, you know, sometimes we get in the presence of the Lord and we feel, and I I even felt this partially today, like I I wanted to do more for the Lord. I wanted to get out in the aisle because there's, there's a room in the front of my, um, church sanctuary where you can kind of dance like and people can just sing and be free to move around and not be kind of hindered by the crowd so there's an area that you're allowed to go up there and dance if you want to or just sing and and do your worship up there and I wanted to but just something kind of held me back today but I how how I wish I would have just gone up today and just given it my all rather than standing far back because I just I wanted to make the Holy Spirit welcome and we can do that right when we when we step out in faith when we usher Christ in when we say hey you're welcome and I'm not going to be ashamed to 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 holler out your name to welcome you you know back in the day in in Palestine and all these different places in in the Hebrew world when a king would be coming you know they would do that oh that thing kind of that they do and they would have their timbrels and they would do like dances and they really made a, a, a great scene for the king to come in right we we know the palm palm sunday they put the, all the palms out and they were shouting and they put lay the palms down as the king came through and so here it's saying blessed are the people who know the festival shout who walk in who walk, O Lord, in the light of your face. Make the king feel welcome as he enters in, as he comes, right? As his Holy Spirit is ushered in. Verse 16, who exalt your name all the day and in righteousness are exalted. So it says these same people, those blessed people, they are not just going to do it when the king is coming, right? It says they do it all day long. They just have an atmosphere that's constantly cultivated in worship, that's constantly just basking in the presence of God, that's constantly trying to set an atmosphere where God is welcome. It says they exalt in your name all day long. And because of that exalting, they are going to be exalted, right? In righteousness. Why? Because they're in Christ. When you're in Christ and you are worshiping him and you're lifting him up, you can't help but be lifted up because you're creating an atmosphere of lifting and you are in Christ. Therefore, if you're lifting him up, then you are being lifted up. It says who exalt in your name all day long and in your righteousness are exalted right? You're being exalted because you're exalting him in his righteousness. You are benefiting from worshiping Christ. You are benefiting from worshiping God. 
right? It's an exchange. It's saying, blessed are those people who know the festival, festal shout, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your face, who exalt in your name all day and in your righteousness are exalted. This is all one sentence. This is just all carrying on talking about the blessedness of the people. Thank you, Lord God. As we lift you up, we are lifted up. As we bless your name, we are blessed. We love you, Lord. Glory to your name. Let's go to the next verse. Verse 17, for you are the glory of their strength. By your favor, our horn is exalted. So it says, for you are the glory of their strength. So when they are strong, it's because of your greatness. When we exude power, when we go out into our jobs, when we go out into the world and we do something big, we do something strong, we have to give glory to God. Why? Because it's because of his glory that we were strong. It says, for you are the glory of their strength. We cannot take credit. He is the glory. He is the one who deserves the credit because he's the one who gives us strength. Where we are weak, he is made strong. By your favor, our horn is exalted. So by your favor, we get anointing by your favor, God, and your righteous right hand, your high hand, right? We are getting benefits from that. You exalt our horn. So when you think of a horn, you think of per family, them having a horn, or, you know, and when you also think of horn, you think of anointing, you pour the oil from the horn, and you just think of establishment of a man, right? power of a man and it says by your favor our horn is exalted so so when you you say like if if you think of it like a lampstand of a church right if you put the lampstand of a certain specific church up high then you're saying maybe that that church is is doing well it's being lifted up god is blessing it so when you're saying a horn is exalted you could say a man and his family are being exalted so in his power is being being it's by god's favor right it's all by god's glory it's all by god's hand if a man is blessed like job job had an exalted horn because he was blessed blessed in the city, blessed in the field. His children were blessed. His wife was blessed. Everything was blessed around him. And it says, for by, no, by your favor, our horn is exalted. It's by the favor of God that you have everything that you have, that you have a pillow to sleep on, that you have breath in your body, right? Your leg may be hurting, but your back is not, or your, or your back may be hurting, but you can breathe well right? It is by God's favor that our horn is exalted. Everything may not be perfect, but God is the one that gets the glory for anything good that is happening in our life. Give him the credit. Stop bragging about the things that are happening and push that credit onto God because you know it was him who did it. You know it was him who did it right? Some people may say, oh, hey, this, it don't take all that. That's too much. You know what? For you, maybe it doesn't, but I'm going to give my God the glory for every good thing that he has done for me. There were so many days, I don't know how I could have made it. And yet God somehow made a way for me. I never forget that one assignment that I had forgotten was due that day. And I walked in the classroom and I immediately realized that I had forgotten about this assignment and this was a humongous assignment and it was like class participation driven it was like a whole setup and because I had been studying for something else I totally forgot about it and it was just an honest to goodness for forgot I just forgot about it and um I walked in and you know fear of course wants to strike you immediately but when I say God made a way that day he made a way that day even when you have to fake it till you make it God will make a way for his people he will make a way for his children he is God alone and besides him there is no other there's no teacher there is no intimidating um, person to that's gonna try to drive you wrong 
God will make a way for his people. It says, for our shield belongs to the Lord, our King, to the Holy One of Israel. All right, so that just is talking about our shield belongs to the Lord. It's the Lord that protects us. It's the Lord that that stops the fiery darts and quenches the fiery darts of the enemy being forced at us, right? So it, it doesn't say that the, the darts won't come. Remember, we have to always remember that, that just because your horn is exalted and you have the favor of God, it does not mean that the enemy will not launch an attack that the enemy will not try to rise up against you, but you have a shield that belongs to the Lord. The Lord gave you that shield and he is going to shield you and quench the fiery darts of the enemy. He's the one who's going to scatter the enemy into seven directions, right? It says, for our shield belongs to the Lord. He, it's his job to protect us and he's a good protector, not just a good protector. That's not even a good word. I, I don't even know the word. He is an efficient protector, right? He is, he has given us the power to protect ourselves with his shield, right? We have, we can enact this at any point in time. That's why he says, put on the whole armor, right? That's what my pastor was talking about today. You know, we have to actually not be lazy and put on this armor, right? But he's given us the shield. He's given us his shield to protect us, the shield of faith. It says, for our, for our shield belongs to the Lord, our King, to the Holy One of Israel. He is faithful. The Holy One of Israel is our God, right? Look at us, us Gentiles who had of no relation to this, this Hebrew God, and yet he, somehow he found a way to us. He spoke about us in the Old Testament. He spoke about us and how he was going to redeem not just his people, but us too. He made a way for us when we were being heathens, when we were in the world, right? God made a way for his people it says for our shield belongs to the lord our king to the holy one of israel our lives i read that yeah our king to the holy one of israel already right okay verse 19 of old you spoke in a vision to your godly one and said i have granted help to the one who is mighty i have exalted one chosen from the people so we know that well actually here if you see where that little c is right here if you hover over that c it talks about the fact that godly one is in some translations in the hebrew it said godly ones so we're talking about the prophets there so it says of old you spoke in a vision to your godly ones right so the prophets the lord spoke through them he they would deliver messages to the people messages to the king and and they will let the people know hey this is what's in the atmosphere this is what's happening right and said so he said when he spoke to them these are the things that he said i have granted help to the one who is mighty i have exalted one chosen from the people so they are prophesying of a king right they prophesied they spoke these words before the fruition of the king right this new king that was coming they spoke of it and we know directly that they're talking about david but indirectly they're talking about jesus right because within david is the lineage that leads to jesus so it says i have granted help to one who is mighty i have exalted one chosen from the people and just think his mighty is not like the mighty of men right because remember david was this little old boy who was out in the the shepherds um out in the field watching the sheep he wasn't even counted worthy enough to come inside when samuel the prophet came and and had all the sons line up he wasn't even seen as as a a viable son right? And yet he, God is calling him mighty through the prophets. It says, I have granted help to one who is mighty. God saw him as mighty, even when he was out there amongst the sheep, 
right? He anointed him to be king, to be ruler, right? He didn't, he didn't start being mighty when he became a king. He was mighty when he was out there with the sheep, right? He was mighty when he was out there all alone, right? Singing and talking to the sheep and picking them up and petting them and loving on them. He was a shepherd then and he became a mighty shepherd later, right? But God saw him as mighty all the way through. Thank you, Lord. It says, I have exalted one chosen from the people. He chose him. He chose you, right? I I, I I like to think of just the thought of, you know, the devil meant slavery for the bad, but, but God even used that. He can use slavery, right? To choose you, to make sure that you got to know him right? It it may not have been the best way, but thank you, Lord, for somehow getting to me, getting to me some way, somehow, getting your word to me through the ages, through my family, and somehow working it out to where I got to know you, Jesus, this Hebrew God, this real, true, and living God, the one who created and was not created, Thank you, Lord, somehow for getting through to me. The lineages, all of the people that that came together and somehow I was created and somehow I was told about Christ through my own grandmother. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. I have granted help to one who is mighty. I have exalted one chosen from the people. The enemy meant it for your bad, but God made a way for it to turn around to be good for you. Think of Joseph. His brothers threw him in that pit. Was that pit good for him? Right? It it was not good for him, but God meant it for his good. He allowed it to happen because he was going to exalt his horn. He was going to lift him up. He was going to give him favor and power. And even when he was thrown and accused by, um, what's her name? I can't think of her name. Um, the wife of Potiphar's wife, right. And, and of rape and all of that. And he was thrown into the dungeon again. Right. But God knew God saw the evil that was being done towards him. And he said, I'm going to turn it around and make it for his good. He's doing that for you. He didn't just do that for people that, you know, oh, I'm going to do it for this one and that one. He did it for you. You just have to acknowledge where he's done it. Write your story down. Remember your story. Think of all the things that God has brought you through. He is a faithful God. He is a faithful God, even to spare you from tribulation. He is a faithful God. Believe in him. Put your hope in his mercy. He will endure. He will come through. Thank you, Lord God, for salvation. Lord, we praise you. We give you all the glory, all the honor today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your steadfastness, your faithfulness. Lord, help us to be faithful to you as well. Lord God, we can never be as good as you, but we can be found in you. Therefore, we can be perfect. We love you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you'd like to accept Jesus as your Savior and Lord, just go ahead and pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Hear my words. See the sincerity of my heart as I pray these words, God. I want to be real with you. I want the realness, God. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. I believe you died on the cross and you rose again on the third day. I believe you are the son of the most high God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Sit on the throne of my heart. Lead me. I've led myself long enough. 
I've not done a good job. Lead me, Jesus. Penetrate every hard spot in me. I surrender to you. I make you my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. In your name I pray. Amen. All right. If you pray that prayer, then you are saved. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. He is going to cover you with his blood. You are a child of the most high God. You are a child of the king. If you believe it and you can receive it. Amen. You can receive it. If you believe it, believe on him. That's all it takes is a free gift salvation is. All it takes is for you to believe what you prayed. Amen. All right. And when when you pray those words, the Holy Spirit is going to come down into your heart. He's going to seal you up until the day of redemption, meaning he's going to put the stamp of approval on you. And when Jesus comes, hey, he, he's going to give you over. You, he's going to fulfill that contract that the Holy Spirit has sealed up ask him to lead you to a church home where you can be sharpened with other believers and then also go and be baptized in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit it's something that jesus wanted us to do to come together to stay with other believers to be sharpened and also to be baptized in his name thank you lord jesus and and when you do those things you're just gonna have a good running start at, at fulfilling the will of God, right? God is so amazing. He has so much in store for us, both here on earth and in heaven. Walk it out, live it, fulfill it. Amen. All right. I love you all. I'm praying for you. I hope you have a blessed night and a blessed day tomorrow. And just watch out for Lord Jesus. He is coming. All right, you guys take care. Bye.